Hello everybody and welcome to our third edition of Be The Action. Thank you so much for joining us. We're so grateful to make the time to do this. For those of you who've joined us on the call before, you probably have a bit of an understanding of what's about to happen. But for those of you who don't, um, I'll just talk you through it. Um, Be The Action was established by Maria Coulter and I um, to celebrate the change makers in construction, the people who are really getting things done. In January, we spoke to Rebecca from Build Force. Last month, we spoke to Andy and Dave from Building Site to Boardroom. You can get podcasts and YouTubes of all of those recordings. Um, we also get some good coverage in the technical press. Um, and you can also jump over onto our Facebook page and our Twitter account. Um, what's going to happen in the call? I've just got a couple of housekeeping things to go through, and then I'm going to hand you over to Maria, and she is going our guest for today, who is Kevin Millen from Disabled People in Construction. Obviously, this is a massive issue at the moment in terms of disabled people in the workforce and some of the conversations that are going on at government level, but there's so much that we can be doing in the construction industry itself. So you probably will have noticed that you are in mute for this call. It's simply because um, we get a lot of background noise and feedback everybody is open, uh, everybody's channels are open when we do this call. If you've got questions, comments, things that you want to, to share, things, uh, any technical issues that you're facing, you can either drop me a note on the chat box on your screen um, for the webinar itself um, and I'll be picking up all of the technical questions as we go through the call. Alternatively, I'll be running the Twitter feed, so if you want to tweet at BE underscore the action um, and I can make sure that we get any of those issues resolved. The Be The Action webinar is every month. Next month, because um, our call would fall on what is Good Friday, we'll be moving the date of that very slightly. We'll let you know as soon as we can. Um, but our um, guest um, has, has been confirmed for our April uh, webinar. If you want to log in later to this, you can do that. As I say, you can also follow the call on the podcast and on YouTube, so you can pick up on this later and, and play this back to your heart's content. As soon as we have um, enough podcasts, we'll be able to get them up on iTunes. For the moment, they are up on Podbean. I'll hand you over to Maria now, and she's going to take you through the call. If you've got any technical problems, any concerns at all, please do drop me a line. Over to you. Maria. Okay, sorry about that slight delay. Not sure what was going to ha what happened there, but anyway, hopefully everybody can hear me and hear what I'm saying. Um, so yeah, I'd like to welcome everybody who's online at the moment. Thank you for for taking time out and listening to us. Um, and yeah, I'd like to welcome Kevin Millen. So Kevin Millen is from Disabled People in Construction. So this week. Um, we've had International Women's Day and the theme for International Women's Day is all about being bold for change. And um, I see this very much as creating uh, an inclusive environment for everybody to come into the industry. We've got massive needs, um, about 400,000 people a year between now and 2021. So we've got massive needs in the industry and there are currently only 3% of disabled people in the construction industry. So I'm delighted that we've got Kevin Millen here today to tell us about disabled people in construction, um, who's a, a senior quantity surveyor for Keep Mode. And I will now like to hand you over to Kevin and I'm going to ask him to tell us a bit about himself and how the group started. Uh, good afternoon all. My name is Kevin Millen, as uh, Catherine told you. Uh, I'm uh, 36 years old. I uh, started surveying uh, 17 years ago, so that's coming up to my 20th year this year. Uh, I've been very lucky with my career. I uh, got to go quite fast. Uh, it's took me around the world, and uh, I believe it's by far the best industry that we've got. Uh, how disabled people in construction came about was I uh, struggled about three years ago uh, dealing with the pressures of my disability getting worse and obviously trying to be a senior surveyor or at that time I was a commercial manager uh, with a lot of pressure on top. Um, so I tried to reach out to find like-minded people 
in the construction industry who were disabled or had had some sort of thing that a uh, support group that um that that we could turn to and uh, and look to do uh similar to the support group that actually had my conditions uh, and was disappointed to find that there was none so i'm talking it through with my wife and uh, thinking as a healthy way of um, dealing with it all i uh, decided to start my own group and that's where disabled people for construction came from uh, the aim of the goal was really to provide support for each other uh, but one of the things i found was that the construction industry with our with our with our way that we things not not many people in construction were disabled and the ones that were weren't looking or didn't know there was a place for us all to meet and so it changed from someone to be supportive into actually getting more people into the construction industry that i love and um trying to get uh, all the things trying to get special into special schools to tell people about the advantages of construction and it also then went into going into uh, nor uh, normal schools uh, probably not the right words to use um, and pass on my story and tell people that despite what schools and the government say about construction probably being the last choice uh, the reasons why it should be uh, the first um, so that's a little bit back from where I come I'll pass you back to Catherine, uh, who hopefully will move the conversation on. Hi, yes, it's Maria back again. So, um, uh, Kevin, myself and you will we'll pass backwards and forwards as I ask you questions. Um, we've got Catherine who's going to be sort of monitoring any questions that people might have. Um, so, I wanted to ask you, you know, what what has been your approach? Because I know um you you started the group disabled people in construction but i know that there's other things that you've been doing uh, and that also involves um being involved with the government as well so if you could just tell me you know all of the things that you've been involved with and what your experiences have been so far so yes it, it's been quite exciting um what we did uh, when I when I started to reach out to organisations within the construction industry, um, I actually joined up with a, um, a group that is, has been unbelievably helpful in moving things forward and supporting me. Uh, a group called um, Construction Council, and what they were doing is they were. Um, Sorry, someone just had to join and I didn't know it was me to do it or something else. Um, what they were doing was um, hiring um, a survey, uh, which this then became the document that I hope you can see on the screen called the Blue Bridge Challenge. Uh, this identified that we have a very big issue in construction. Uh, I'll probably come back to this a bit later on, but to tell you where it led to was that the, the discovery was that the percentage of disabled people in construction compared to the the, the national the national uh, the national percentage was was massively apart, and that obviously then identified there's a lots of roles uh, with the lots of roles. I got speaking to Disability UK about how we can look to try and get them get more people, disabled people employed and get more disabled people into construction. From that. I got asked to um, join um, a all party, um, all party parliamentary group, um, which was a day of us, um, us, what do you call it? Not evidence givers, but uh, people, witnesses. You know, they called us coming forward uh, to tell us our information about how we think it, things should change and the ideas we had to change them. Uh, from that, we produced the white paper, which you can also see in the background, um, which then led to me being one of three um, three witnesses that were called for to sit in the government and be um, drilled basically about what more the government can do. Uh, and there was obviously quite a big interest in construction scenes. Where our biggest client is the, in the construction industry is the government. The biggest spending for the government is quite often construction and social housing and um, the contracts that relates to. So it was very, very well. Uh, 
Um, I think I've got it all in a minute. I'll come ask you back. I will continue on learning, but um, I'll be doing it so far. Right, I'm back. So, um, okay. So, yeah. So that's brilliant that the um, the construction to council have, have got involved there. Um, so I'm actually chair of the construction council industry council for the East Midlands, and, and I'm a board member as well. So it's brilliant that, that they've got involved. Um, but what I'd like to understand more is what what are some of the recommendations that have come out of the um, the, the government sort of um, lobbies and advice that you've, you've the panels that you've been sitting on. So, what can the industry do to actually to make construction a welcoming environment for disabled people? Hi, I'm back again. I'm not sure if we're having some technical difficulties here. Hopefully not. Um, but I just wanted to ask Kevin, um, what can construction companies actually do to to welcome people with disabilities into the workplace? Okay, so we're back. So what construction companies do is there's so much that we can do. Uh, when we look across uh, look across um, our industry compared to so many others, yes, it's a bit different because we're not based out of a factory, but we generally do tend to work out of offices. So the the ideas that um, the ideas that the construction people can do is first of all start learning, make a bit to actually do more, and um, as an industry that's responsible for over these years making people have chronic conditions or legal disability, um, it is important we do more. Things like ensuring that uh, you are investing in going out to special schools or to groups uh, and reading and talking about the construction industry, looking to recruit them, uh, and even taking a more general overview of things like table parking bays, the offices. Uh, over the years, not so much nowadays. I, I've never seen a table parking bay in an outside of construction in construction companies. Obviously, it's the turn into the main uh, interactors, but luckily enough, that's not the case nowadays. Uh, one of the biggest fears, and we can come back, is that health and safety on on sites. And obviously, we're all aware that it has become a major issue uh, in the construction company, which is all good. We need to be safe and need to be safe protecting each other. Um, but we can do that without having to exclude the uh, table people. Things like table parking bays on the site, um, ramp access to offices, having the offices on the ground floor so that any design professionals, etc., can come in and use those and attend meetings rather than put them on the top floor. Uh, and just think a little bit more about how we do things so that if we do have the table people working on that specific project, they can come and do their job. Uh, we also need to look at the technology available to us now. We um, looked at doing a few things with the architects and designers where we introduced things like FaceTime, where it enabled um, people, uh, the designers, to see what the issue was on site firsthand, uh, be able to come up with a suggestion uh, and resolve it without physically having to walk out on site, therefore remove the need to have any concerns about health and safety on that matter. On the flip side, one of the benefits it was by introducing us too was that our design, our, our operations teams could actually get answers to problems on site that day and so to wait the fortnightly or monthly uh, design team meetings and getting all those issues sorted out then. So it led to a unexpected increase in urgency. We also looked at things with regards to operatives on site. Uh, the first ones we identified were deaf people. The concern that came back, what about fire? 
So what we looked at doing is introducing visual alarms, which are flashing strobe lights. And if any of you have been to a restaurant where it's been too busy, the uh, vibrating fobs that uh, get handed out, we um, were slipping them into pockets. Uh, and then the fire alarm would go off, we see the visual alarm, and then you'd also feel the vibration and know that it's time to uh, leave to go to the, the fire make up point. So it, 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 there's lots to be done, and that means there's lots of good we can do. So it, it needs to make a concerted effort together rather than saying, yes, we want to get behind something, and saying, actually, we're going to lead something and, and taking on small bits at a time will make a big, big leap forward. Um, I hope that wasn't too much rambling, but I'll um, pass you back to Marissa now. Thank you, Marissa. 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 And I'd sort of listened to this podcast and I'd made the decision that I was going to be the action and I was going to actually do something um, to attract more disabled people into my workplace. What would be my first po point of call? Where would you direct me to? Because you spoke about the different technology that's available, different things that they can do. Um, is there some somewhere that they can go to to find out this? information and sort of get a get more of an idea on on what to do Hi, Kevin. I just need you to accept the presenter role if you're still there. Okay. I think I'm back now, so that's good. Sorry about that. I don't know what happened. Everything seemed to vanish for a minute, but I'm um, back. So, uh, if I was a if I was a, a construction company, what what could I do today? The, the big issue that we've got, and it's not just with disabled people, um, schools and government are not telling people that construction is one of the first choices you could be doing when you're at school. Uh, and one of the things you can do as a um, owner of a construction business, one, you, you can look to see um, retired uh, trade people, people who have worked in the construction industry, uh, have got later into life, people with like paint and is getting bad backs, floor layers with bad knees, people that have uh, got conditions to stop them carrying on being able to do their trades, nothing actually stopping them actually becoming and using that experience, years of experience, and moving into the management side of the business, um, because you tend to find the ones who have actually done it on site and, and are the ones that are you know how to do it best. Uh, don't get me wrong, doing the educational route is also a very valid and important way to do it, uh, and that's one of the big things about construction. Many people come at it in different ways and it gives us a lot more wider scope on a, the best way of moving things forward. So one thing is obviously to get people with the tools, but as, as a construction owner today, uh, going to local colleges and speaking to the, the closest college that you got to, uh, got to, and if you can uh, speak to someone who's doing a maths degree, um, someone who's uh, looking into English uh, and saying, have they thought about coming into instruction and taking uh, these, these people on as a management trainee, which is what I, I did back in 1997. Uh, 17 years old, I became a, got a management trainee's position, uh, which was a, a four year process of where you learned everything about the role that you wanted to become, which was quantity surveying. Uh, so the key thing is trying to partner up with a local college uh, and more as disabled um, minded is to uh, identify what has these capabilities. 
uh, that, that they have um, students of that type. It, it, it's very difficult because the next thing you can do is people like Disability UK, Purple Space, uh, these sort of organisations, they also have a list of people who, um, one of the things that came out of the parliamentary group is that the feeling that disabled people are the most motivated um, motivated employees in the market today it, it was something that came quite through because disabled people uh, don't have the option of choosing between different roles and stuff they would love a love a job love love being out in the community love working with colleagues uh, and and that motivation is key instruction because there is hard days and there is bad days so getting access to people like Disability UK, Purple Space, explaining what you're looking for, explaining what you, you are offering uh, and what you're willing to do uh, and drawing up and making those contacts with the people that um, you think you can work with to make it a success. Um, the, as far as I've seen so far, there's been no side of act, not just in the construction industry, but people having a positive uh, inclusion of disabled employees so much better for the workforce the people that, that the people that they work with who are motivated the people that are actually employed are motivated uh, and all you all, all you have to remember a disabled person it, it, it was quite common said that a disabled person feels like they have to work twice as hard to do the same amount of work as a, as an able-bodied person but also feels that they have to do twice as much as an able-bodied person to feel worthwhile. And that's sort of something that we've got to get back, that we've got to make people understand that, you know, we're leveling the paying field. You are equal, you work as hard as anybody else here, and you achieve as much as anybody else here, and that's all anybody wants people to do. Uh, and that is what's key. No one that we've spoken to, one that Disability UK we've spoken to, says they want an advantage, all they want is an equal and fair opportunity. Uh, and so just to summarise, one, contact local schools, two, uh, look at colleges that have uh, adaptation for special, special needs, uh, and three, contact Disability UK, Purple Space, lists and lists of um, people out there who are fighting to get disabled people into jobs and you will probably find in the turnovers that we see now in construction of between three and five years, you will more than likely get an employee that will say to you for the opportunity. Um, not that you'll get them cheap, you should pay them what they're worth and pay them what they're competitive, uh, competitive with no matter who they are or what they are. Uh, uh, that is important and that, that probably is the best way. Oh, of course, and finally, drop me a message. I'm sure I can find you someone who will be there the next day, willing to work, willing to do whatever you wish, wish, wish them to get them going. Uh, I hope that's okay. I'll pass that back um, to Maria. Uh, I hope that was okay too. Yep, that's brilliant, Kevin. Some fantastic information there. So you've mentioned um, Disability UK and you've mentioned Purple Space as well. And obviously um, people getting out into schools. Um, there's a lot of joined up approaches happening uh, in the construction industry now about getting people into schools to be able to speak to them. Um, you've got things like STEM ambassadors and you've also got um, construction ambassadors as well for the CITB. Um, you've also got um, careers and enterprise um, service that's been, that the government I think has, has started and a lot of the, the local enterprise partnerships have got, um, are looking for ambassadors for people to, to go into schools. Um, so there's different ways that we can have more of a, a strategic joined up approach to actually getting into schools. Um, but I just wanted to end the interview, getting towards the end of the interview. So I know that, Kevin, you've started this group, Disabled People in Construction, because there wasn't one. And we absolutely applaud you for that, because, um, you know, rather than waiting for somebody to do it, 
um, you were that somebody and you took action, which is brilliant. Um, but I do understand that you are um, one one person. Uh, I know you've had some support from the Construction Industry Council, but I also know that you've got a full time job and you've got a family. So how as an industry can we help you? What is the call to arms for people in the industry to get involved in disabled people in construction? If you could accept the... Yeah, there it is. Sorry, it was hidden again. I'm obviously doing something wrong. So the call to arms is safe with construction. Um, Maria's right arm and, and the support and the offer of help that I get offered on a daily basis is massive. But my ability to be able to accept that help and to channel it, it is so restricted by, by obviously my full time job and, and my family who are amazing who let me do both. Uh, um, but obviously need time too. So the call to arms is please you can message me. You can find us on Twitter, which perfectly will show you now. I think it's at Mill and Kevin, um, so you can get hold of me there. Even if it's you want to spend a, a few hours um, contacting people, trying to get information about how to get to school into schools, or you can actually also find us on uh, disabled people in construction on LinkedIn. Uh, with, you come send ask to be a member. Everybody's accepted. Also, there's any budding graphic designer out there. If you can come with us with uh, them, I'll be highly appreciative. Um, I think the key call to arms is that we need to start leading the way. The construction industry is by far the best industry in the world. It's forever changing. You're not on one site or one project forever. It's always new, always new people, and it's the most. Um, team building industry I think the world has because every two years you meet a whole new team and pull together. We need to extend that further. We need to pull in other parts of society. We have a, a huge problem coming up, not just for disabled people, for construction as a whole. Um, I'll just briefly show you, I know I know that we're running out of time. I can't remember how much time we're supposed to have. Uh, let me just show you a quick fag, uh, figures on um, the age of people. Age in the UK, you can see here we've got nearly over 30,000 people in the next 10 to 15 years retiring. The worrying thing is if you look at the under 25s, we have 4,000 people coming in. And today, every day, everybody's getting phone calls by agencies saying people need spares, people need project managers. We need to fit this quick. We need to get into schools, tell schools that this is the best industry to be in. We need to get people in there who can excite schools, tell them the benefits that uh, that in construction you can leave with five GCSEs and still by the age of 25, 40, 50,000 a year if you work hard and are good at what you do. Most industries, most degrees won't offer that, can offer that in the future. At the construction industry, there's lots of jobs out there, lots of demand for good people to work hard. So it's able bodied to say people LGBT, ethnic minorities, we need to lead the way. We need to say we are the best. We are the most inclusive. Let's be as inclusive as we could bring everybody in and help everybody to get into this this great industry of ours. It, it's amazing, it's given me the most amazing lives to let me live in the Caribbean, let me meet my wife who's Brazilian. It's took me all around the world and I want to give that to people who come from Maybe not the best education, maybe not the um, best family or the richest families. But construction industry really gives people from that level the, the opportunity to do some amazing things in their lives to the point where uh, you're 36 years old, you're speaking on uh, speaking on the uh, on a, the internet, trying to tell up, trying to pass across how much you love it, even after 20 years, and, and that's what I want to do. People come and contact me. People, please offer your help. The more help you can do, the more help we can get people into this industry, people into colleges, colleges and um, universities that will actually lead to jobs, unlike the the, the the degrees that people are being told to do today that lead to one application in 50 
degree qualifications. Construction industry, if you're qualified, you will get somewhere. You will get on. So let's do that. Let's let's pass the word around and let's get people who can excite young people, normal people, older people. We need to get or even older age demographic people in construction. Uh, most skills are transferable. Most uh, there's so many different professions that something you're good at will fit to something in construction, uh, and that's what we need to do because we don't want to get 20 years down the line all be around because we can't build any buildings, we can't move forward, we can't develop this country of ours. Um, it, it, it's going to be good, but we need to work at it and not wait for someone else to do it for us. So I hope that. Okay, it's last word from me. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you can find me at uh, Milling Kevin on Twitter and uh, on LinkedIn on the group page, Disabled People in Construction. Uh, it's been a pleasure. Hopefully I get to speak to you all again soon. Uh, also, just to quickly mention, we're trying to do something with CITB uh, and I'm pretty sure we might need some support with that in the future too. So watch, uh, watch out for BB Action come to their website, see what they're doing, and uh, and please support them. It's it is important. Let's go forward. Oh, uh, Kevin, that thank you so much. That was brilliant. We absolutely love your um, enthusiasm and, and passion that you've got for the industry, and you've given us some great ways to get in contact with you and some ideas as to what we can start doing. I really love the idea of what you're saying about getting people who've, who are, you know, older people in the industry who can actually mentor people. Um, I think that that's really important. So there's lots for us to think about there. Um, and we will publicise the heck out of this call. Um, we will make sure that we, we're banging the drum and we're going to get people behind you to support you. Um, but I think what's interesting is the message is the universal message that we have to, you know, that is out in the industry at the moment is we need more people and we want everybody to be involved, but we need to create an inclusive environment for everybody to be involved. So um, I'm now going to pass you over to Catherine, who's going to wrap everything up for us. Thank you so much for listening and thank you, Kevin, for, um, for being in the action with us today. Thank you. Thank you, Maria. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you all for listening. I hope you've really enjoyed today's call. Um, I have to say, uh, on a personal note, I'm I'm so inspired to just hear all the amazing change makers in construction that possibly don't get front news in Building Magazine or Construction News, but who, people who are really doing incredible things. I find it so inspiring. Um, as Kevin mentioned, um, we're all on Twitter, we're all on Facebook, we're all on LinkedIn. Please get in touch with us. Um, please spread the word because people need to hear this. We need to know that construction is not closed to disabled people. There are so many opportunities. As I mentioned at the top of the call, um, we've got our guest speaker confirmed for April and it's Louise Clark who will be talking about bringing your whole self to work. Um, because that would normally fall on the 14th of April, which is Good Friday, we will send around um, Eventbrite invitations for the day that we rearrange that. Um, so please look out for that. And hopefully we will catch you all next month. Thank you again for joining us um, and speak to you next month. Take care.